Let us all join in singing. Sing a new song. You will find this in the Gather Hymnal, number 607. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, we come today to celebrate the 32nd Sunday of the Ordinary Time. And as we, as we approach the end of the liturgical year, the scriptures remind us of the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. In today's Gospel, Jesus cautions us to organize our lives in the light of our faith so that we may enter eternal life with God. To prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins, ask the Lord's forgiveness, and renew our commitment to live holy lives. Lord Jesus, you came to bring us eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to enlighten us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory to gather those who live holy lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of good Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. For taking thought of wisdom is the perfection of prudence. And whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her and graciously appears to them in the ways and meets them with all solicitude and care. The word of the Lord. Please join in singing the refrain of the responsorial psalm. The words are, My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord, thirsting for you, my God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not, may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For, I, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, no, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's parable of the ten virgins specifically talks about those of us who have been blessed with membership in the church. In Jesus' time and going back before the Babylonian exile and to the present day, the number 10 in Judaism is a sacred number signifying a congregation of believers. Today there is no formal public prayer in a Jewish community unless there are at least 10 prayers. Whenever Jesus uses the image of a wedding, 
The bridegroom is himself, and the bride is his church. Here, the bridal party's virgins, literally the bridesmaids, are those who are called through baptism to praise and serve God as his church. Notice that all of the bridesmaids, the wise as well as the foolish, have oil when they trim their lamps, and all of them have fallen asleep, but they wake and they find themselves in darkness. Midnight, the darkest time of the day. They look for the Lord, but they cannot see him. The bridesmaids are going through the human condition that all believers suffer from time to time. And it comes to the most committed of Christians. We cannot remain on watch all the time. We fall asleep. We are weak. And when we do watch, we do not always have the consolation of feeling in sync with God. We do not always feel God's presence, knowing his Lord's love in our present condition. Sometimes we miss the presence and reality of the Jesus who loves us. And we dearly want that feeling of being with the Lord. We remember it. But sometimes the Lord simply seems gone. The bridesmaids are suffering what John of the Cross calls the dark night of the soul, something that afflicted him for a long period of time. St. Ignatius of Loyola, recognizing that its intensity can be deep like a depression or subtle like a slightly unsettled mood, calls it desolation. We all will suffer it, have suffered it, and will suffer it at different times. When we are feeling out of sync with the Lord, we are tempted to break our resolve to persevere in the prayer life, in the ministries, and the commitments that we've made. We're uncomfortable, anxious, and want to bring the old feeling back, or simply avoid the current discomfort. Usually it's a negative feeling, but it can also be disguised as enjoying a distraction that pulls us completely away from faith but gives us a better feeling. Desolation is anything, any mood or feeling or frame of mind that brings us away from faith, hope, and charity, but makes it easier to find fault with others, to be argumentative, judgmental, or anxious to go and find a different creed or cult or faith group. We may simply hide in plain sight, leaving spiritually but going through the motions to keep family and friends near and comfortable. In today's parable, five of the bridesmaids persist in faith, holding up their lamps and also prepared for the darkness because they have anticipated periods of desolation and know how to deal with it. St. Ignatius offers specific tactics for how to deal with these periods of desolation, for filling our flasks with oil. And his first rule would come straight from today's gospel. When suffering desolation, when not feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit, do not make important decisions and change one's past decisions and way of life. When one does not feel the presence of the Lord, one is not in sync with the Holy Spirit or listening to the Holy Spirit when new ideas come. If God seems to be leaving us alone, we are probably in the place God wants us to be. But while it is not a time to change our way of life and our way of prayer, Ignatius says it is a time to become even more committed in our prayers and to fight the desolation. The strongest prayers are prayers of gratitude, remembering our blessings. That automatically will work on our mind and remind us of past consolations, bring us into the gratitude that is our duty and our salvation all our lives. 
recalling other times of desolation and our recoveries will also bring the end of desolation quickly and help us to sustain the period. Ignatius also notes that the desolation itself might be a sign of other blessings. We are reminded when we are feeling out of sync with the Lord of how we do depend on the Lord and we are made to depend on the Lord. That is our essential self. Desolation may be a time, a wake-up call to renew the seriousness of our faith and recover our dedication. Desolation is also a time for a pure love when our praise and thanks to God is loving God for the sake of God alone. When we're doing it without relying on the nice feeling that comes from it, we are truly loving God. We are willing his good and not our own. This is a deeper level of commitment. I think Jesus also wanted us, when we hear about the bridesmaid's lamp, to remember the earlier sermon he gave on the mount when he tells us, you are the light of the world. The wise bridesmaids loyally keeping an uncomfortable vigil may also be serving the light Jesus intends to inspire their neighbors. Think of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. On a train ride, she literally experienced the presence of Jesus who was with her and telling her he wanted her to go out and serve the poorest of the poor. That one deep consolation sustained her mission for over 50 years while she was also suffering the removal of that consolation and the absence of that wonderful loving presence. She would suffer every doubt. She would suffer her doubts on the very existence of God. But she remained doubly committed when she was worst in her depression to prayer. And she held up her lamp constantly and looked for Christ and the people that she served. And that light that she was holding up became for so many other people the light of Christ, calling them into holiness and faith. The foolish bridesmaids committed folly in not filling their flasks before the midnight watch, but their biggest mistake was leaving the station. Notice that their lamps never burned out while they were there waiting for the Lord. They did not think of how their fires might burn brightest when they were burning low. They did not know or remember today's promise in our first reading from Scripture that whoever for wisdom's sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care. Wisdom comes to all who love wisdom, not who have wisdom, but who desire and love wisdom. They did not trust that the Lord would welcome all who are waiting for him. Ignatius stresses that withdrawing from faith leads to worse decisions and more difficulties, some permanent. Jesus warns us today that there will come a time when decisions become final with eternal consequences. So let us resolve to hold fast to our faith to give thanks always to the Lord who brings meaning to all we find in life, even the times, perhaps especially the times where we feel his absence and can only love him for himself. Let us now stand and profess our faith. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life and the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the wisdom that enables humanity to do the Father's will and advance his kingdom on earth. Our response is, Lord, accept our prayer. For the whole church, that we will receive the grace this week to keep our hearts and minds set on reaching our heavenly homeland, we pray. Lord, Lord accept our prayer. For those who govern, that God's wisdom will guide and direct them, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For a true peace based on justice and for an end to the wars in Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, and Sudan, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. In observance of Veterans Day, we now place in our sanctuary a book of remembrance with the names of many of our own veterans as well as the names of active military in our parish families and with a rose to mark our special prayers this day. For those who have served in the military, for veterans and all military personnel, for those who risk their lives that our world may know peace, for gratitude, safety, healing, and peace for all, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For all who are suffering physical, spiritual, or psychological distress, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For the dead, and with this Mass's special intentions for the souls of Lucille Grasco and Max and Hancher, and for all who mourn their passing, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. For the holiness of the parishioners of St. Mary of Vernon, for the holiness of those who have asked our prayers, those we promised our prayers, and those who are in most need of God's presence today, we pray. Lord, accept our prayer. O God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church, for you yourself are the source of all devotion and wisdom, and grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The song for the presentation of gifts is in the Gather Hymnal, number 859, God of Day and God of Darkness.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and of all this holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It is truly to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exultation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all 
so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you send your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, 
those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death. May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Communion song is in the Gather Hymnal, number 945, I Am the Bread of Life.
Please be seated for announcements. First off, bring the, your whole family for Run for Pi today at 1 p.m. We have a gorgeous weather, just wonderful for, for some running or walking for Pi. It's, uh, there is an option. 2024 calendars are now available in the Narthex. We ask that you take only one per family so we can have for everyone in our parish. Stop in the Narthex to sign up for the November 18th wedding anniversary mass and dinner dance. Please stop by by the Operation Reach Out display in the Narthex, which honors both our active mil military personnel and veterans. Everyone is invited to Men's Club presentation on Monday, November 13th, in the Parish Center. Medal of Honor recipient Alan J. Lynch will speak to us, and dessert will be provided. Cairo students, it's time for service and thanks winning from 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday, today, November 12th, in the Parish Center. Earn service hours, play games, and have a taco dinner. High school teens, come to an evening of giving thanks and pie baking contest today at 6.30 p.m. in the Parish Center. Our Knights of Columbus are sponsoring an evening of giving and fun at Feed My Starving Children on November, 8, November 16th at 7 p.m. Knights of Columbus Christmas tree sale is uh, now opening. Order before Wednesday, November 22nd and get 15% off of your Christmas tree. Sharing Hands will have a Thanksgiving food drive next weekend. Gift Sunday tags will be in the Narthex on November 18th and 19th and November 25th and 26th. You are invited to participate in the weekend Advent Masses by lighting the Advent wreath during the gathering ceremonies. Please stop by the table in the Narthex to reserve a time for your family or group. Registration for Advent by candlelight is now open. All women of the parish are invited to attend this beautiful evening of prayer, reflection, and fellowship. My friends, as we are this weekend, celebrate, uh, we celebrate the Veterans Day, I would like to invite all the veterans here present to please stand for a special uh, blessing and recognition. And at this moment for the shared prayer for our veterans, I would like to, uh, to invite everyone here present to extend your hands and to join in for the prayer over our veterans. Let us pray. Almighty Father, you are lavish in bestowing all your gifts, and we give you thanks for the favors you have given to our veterans. In your goodness, you have favored them and kept them safe in the past. We ask that you continue to protect them and shelter them in the shadow of your wings. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us express our appreciation by the round of applause. Thank you. Thank you so much for your service. You may be seated. And now let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy, that by the pouring forth of your Spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. For the closing song, please turn to the Gather Hymnal, number 865, and join in singing, Soon and Very Soon.